is another example that tests your knowledge of correlation. Um, let's just take a look at the slope here. Records show that shorter people tend to score higher on the SAT test. Now, I don't know if that's true, but this is just, you know, could be made up data, could come out of a book, whatever it may be, but you just got to go with what it says. Records show that shorter people tend to score higher on the SAT test. All the short people out there are like, yeah, that's right. Um, but anyways, the correlation is R equals 0.62. The slope of the least squared regression line that predicts SAT scores from a person's height suggests that on average, people tend to score 2.5 points more for every increase of one inch in height. What would be the slope of the line that would predict height from SAT score? Well, you got to figure out which one is your explanatory variable and which one is your response variable. In the first scenario, it says the slope of the least square prediction line predicts that SAT scores from a person's height. So SAT scores in the beginning, in this first scenario, is our response variable and a person's height is the explanatory variable. And if we were talking about the regression, or I'm sorry, if we were talking about the correlation and we switched the two, then the correlation does not change. Correlation is interchangeable. When you switch your response variable and your explan explanatory variable, the correlation is going to remain the same. But the slope does not necessarily remain the same. same. In, in fact, most of the time, the slope will change. So in this case, originally I am looking at, um, remember, slope is change in y over change in x. So originally, this was SAT scores over the person's height. But in the second scenario that we're given, that they are giving us, things change. It says, what would be the slope of the line that would predict height? So now height becomes our response variable, and SAT score becomes our explanatory variable. Well, basically what we need to do is just take SAT and height, and we are, are switching them. So instead of SAT scores over the height, we're going with height over SAT scores. Now, we have to use what they originally gave us to make this change. Originally, the slope, and again, I'm talking about the slope. I'm not talking about the correlation. But they tell us that the original slope says that on average, people tend to score 2.5 points more for every increase of one inch. So the original would be 2.5 over 1. Well, we're now going to switch those. So it becomes 1 over 2.5. Now, you don't want to leave your answer like that. You, you don't have 1 over 2.5. So let's go ahead and change that into a decimal. 1 divided by 2.5 is 0.4. So our new slope would end up being 0.4. But we shouldn't just stop right there. That would not be good enough. We would want to interpret this slope and give it some context. So let's go ahead and type this out. And when we type it out, I think what we would say is, <coughs> What would the slope of the line that would predict height from SAT score being? Um, we just type that in. The slope of the line that would predict height from SAT score would be 0.4. And it's pretty good to, to give some context here. So if I give a little bit of context, I would then want to say, as a person's SAT score increases by one point, we can expect, let me scroll down so you guys can see this a little bit better, 
There we go. We can expect their height to increase by 0.4 inches, okay? And that is it.